the magistrate of the town, who was silently observing what was happening, didn't like what was going on. When he heard about the apparitions of Fatima, he realized the effects they might have among the people. If I allow this to go on, the church will rise again very soon. No one will respect me, and I will become the laughing stock of this town. I must put an end to this once and forever. On the day of the fourth apparition, the magistrate arrived at Lucia's doorstep on a horse carriage. He made the children believe that he would take them to the cova, and they boarded the carriage. When they started moving, it was Lucia who suspected something was not right. This is not the way to the cova, Dairia. Oh, that. You see, we will take a quick stop to meet the pastor, and then we will go to the cova. They soon reached his house, and he quickly grabbed the children out of the carriage and locked them in a room. You won't leave this room until you tell me the secret. And if you don't, the executioner is on his way. And you know what will happen next. The children remained calm and did not answer him a word. The magistrate soon left the building, thinking of returning back after some time. After a long wait, the door opened, and instead of the executioner, there stood the magistrate's wife. She was a kind woman and allowed them to play in the garden. They were shifted to the local prison the next day. During the following days, the children were interrogated, threatened, and even promised money to divulge the secret. But the kids were determined that they would rather die than reveal the secret. When people learned of what was going on, they were enraged. They filed outside the prison in uproar, shaking their fists, swinging their staffs. Everyone was restless. No, I cannot let them leave just like that. I have to learn about the secrets. The magistrate had no options left, and he had to let the children leave. On the following Sunday, the 19th of August, the children, according to their custom, went to the Cova de Iria after Mass. There, they said the rosary, then returned to Aljustro. After lunch, Lucia, together with Francisco and his elder brother John, left for a place called Valinhos, not far away. It was around four o'clock. Lucia became aware of the signs that always immediately preceded the apparitions of Our Lady. The sudden cooling of the air, the paling of the sun, and the typical flash. Their faces brightened up as they realized that they were to experience the supernatural again. What does your grace want of me? I want you to continue to come to the Cova da Iria on the 13th and to continue to say the rosary every day. Can you perform a miracle so that all might see and believe it's really you? Yes. In the last month in October, I shall perform a miracle so that all may believe in my apparitions. Looking very sad, Mary then said, Pray, pray very much, and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell, because there are none to sacrifice themselves and pray for them. Saying this, the lady took leave of her little friends and began to rise towards the east as before. By now, the children had thoroughly absorbed Mary's plea for prayer and penance and did everything they could to answer it. They prayed for hours while lying prostrate on the ground. They knotted some pieces of old rope around their waists as a form of mortification, not removing them day or night. On September 13th, 
very large crowds began to converge on Fatima from all directions. The children arrived around noon. After the customary flash of light, they saw Mary on the home oak tree. Continue to pray the rosary in order to obtain the end of the war. In October, our Lord will come, as well as Our Lady of Dolores and Our Lady of Carmel. Saint Joseph will appear with the child Jesus to bless the world. God is pleased with your sacrifices. He does not want you to sleep with the rope on, but only to wear it during the daytime. Lucia then began to put forward the petitions for cures to be told. Yes, I will cure some, but not others. In October, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. Saying this, Our Lady began to rise as usual and disappear. During the last three apparitions, Our Lady promised the children that the last time she would appear in October, she would effect a miracle that everyone would see and thereby believe. Lucia had repeated this promise to others, and the news of it had spread like wildfire throughout the whole country. Unbelievers sneered at the prediction, and the enemies of the church called it a huge hoax that the church was trying to put over on the people. For them, October the 13th would be a day of great celebration, the day when the hoax would be revealed. The children were greatly saddened at the unbelief of so many, but they had full trust in the goodness of Our Lady, so they had no worries. Many newspapers and magazines, including the journalist Avalino de Almeida, published a satirical article on the whole business in the anti-religious newspaper O Secular. On the morning of October 13, 1917, fear and panic prevailed in Fatima. Rain was pouring from the heavens, a sad beginning for the glorious day promised by Our Lady and the children. The rain, however, did not dampen the spirits of the many thousands of people who came from every section of Portugal to witness the miracle promised. Many pilgrims walked barefooted, reciting the rosary as they went, all crowding into the area around the cova. Away at Lucia's home, everyone was disturbed. Senhora dos Santos was sad, as she had never been before. She feared that this was Lucia's last day on earth. Tears running down her face, she looked at her daughter, who tried to cheer her. Don't fear, little mother, for nothing will happen to us. Our Lady shall do what she promised. When Lucia was ready, Senhora dos Santos decided to go also. If my daughter dies, I want to be at her side. The children reached the home oak around noon, and they were overwhelmed with the crowd. What is the time of apparition? At noon. Look, it's already noon. Our lady never lies. Let us wait. A few minutes went by. The old priest looked at his watch again and said, Noon is gone! Everyone out of here! The whole thing is a hoax! I knew it! Just then, Lucia saw a flash. Silence! Silence! Our Lady is coming! Our Lady came. She slowly rested upon the branches of the tree. She's here! I am looking at her, Mother. What does your grace want of me? I want a chapel to be built here in my honor. I am Our Lady of the Rosary. Continue to say the rosary every day. The war will end soon and the soldiers will return to their homes. I have many things to ask you, to heal some sick people and to convert some sinners, and... Some, yes. Others, 
No. People must amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. They must not offend our Lord any more, for he is already too much offended. Do you want anything more? Nothing more. Then neither will I ask anything more of you. Our Lady started rising up slowly, and as she went higher, she opened her hands that emitted a flood of light. There she goes! There she goes! It was at this precise moment that the clouds were quickly dispersed and the sky was clear. The sun was now pale as the moon. Then, slowly, the image of Saint Joseph holding in his left arm the child Jesus appeared to the left of the sun. He slowly raised his arm and together with child Jesus made the sign of the cross three times. Our Lady, in the meantime, stood in all her brilliancy to the right of the sun. As the children stared, enraptured by these most beautiful heavenly visions, the countless thousands of people were amazed and overpowered by other miracles in the skies. The sun now shone in an indescribable color. Hey, I can look at the sun with ease. Everybody stood still and quiet, gazing at the sun. At a certain point, the sun stopped its play of light and then started dancing. Some of the people gathered were afraid. Witnessing the miracle, they thought they were going to die that day. <gasps> Our Lady, save us! Some begged for mercy, and some were confessing their sins out loud. the sun swerved back to its orbit and rested in the sky. Uh, I'm alive! I'm alive! <laughs> Everyone was relieved when this tremendous miracle got over. The miracle had come to pass at the hour and day as designated by Our Lady. Countless physical cures of the blind and the lame were reported that day. The miracle is reported to have been seen from as far as 15 to 25 miles away, thus ruling out the possibility of any type of collective hallucination or mass hypnotism. Doubters and skeptics had become believers. Even Oseculo's chief editor, Avelino de Almeida now reported affirmatively and stood by his story later. After the last apparition, the three children tried to return to their ordinary routine life. People flocked to see and speak to them. The poor, the rich, even priests came. They asked a thousand different questions but the answers were always the same. The innocence and simplicity of the three children were proof of their truthfulness to everyone around them. To see them was to believe in them. Hello, viewers. You can watch all episodes of this video right now on Patreon. If you can pledge a small monthly donation as low as $2 on Patreon, you can watch exclusive videos, bonus content, get free merchandise, and much, much more. Just go to patreon.com slash Christian Kids. We turn the best lessons from our faith into interesting animated videos and share them online. With your support, we'll be able to make more videos and invest more in the quality of each video. So what do you say? Every little bit helps, and your kindness will be rewarded with some pretty awesome perks. If you are not in a position to support us financially, 
then please do pray for us. Prayer support is very important for our mission. We hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank you.